Hey, what's up, nerds? It is that time again. I am kind of nearing the end of one army project, and I am looking at what my next project might be. So I wanted to go through the process with you guys of how I'm, you know, picking my next army project, what I'm thinking about, and maybe that's helpful for people in uh, how they're going to get to uh, their own choices. All right, so my criteria. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, it can't be an army that I already own. Um, I'm also including that uh, my daughter's army, um, just because it, it's still the same army in the house. Um, it can't be an army that I have previously owned. Um, I got rid of all those for reasons. Um, aesthetics. Um, I have to like the way the army looks. Um, it has to be something that's going to be interesting and fun to paint, um, have some ideas for what to do with it. Um, it has a play style that's different from my other armies that I already own, which I think is not that hard because I've got, um, you know, Slaves to Darkness, which is very hard hitting offense. You have Maggotkin, which is very defensive attrition and then Skaven is sort of this like tricky grab bag uh, with some heavy shooting. So um, that leaves me open a lot. Um, it's got to be a Johnny army. Um, if you're not familiar with psychographic profiles, um, that's basically an army that's um, where you uh, have like creative skill expression, you know, if we're talking like Magic the Gathering, Johnnies are the ones innovating combo decks and um, things that are good without them being um, uh, necessarily just like fun or just uh, trying to win. They're trying to kind of show how creative and smart they are. Um, so it's kind of going to be a bit of an army like that, but that's actually a lot of armies in Age of Sigmar these days. Um, I want something that's going to play in all the phases. So something that's got magic and or uh, priests, something that's got some solid shooting, some solid cavalry, some solid infantry, monsters, on and on and on. Like, it, well, not really that much on and on because that's most of the, the bullet points, but there's a bunch of options and uh, I want to be able to have a bit of a grab bag of everything. Uh, I'd like to be able to run like a, a Highlander list that's uh, kind of balanced. Um, and then the last thing is what it doesn't need to be. It, it doesn't need to be a good army in the current meta. It doesn't need to be like a historically good army. It just has to be something that's going to be fun to play, something I'm going to enjoy, that the hobby process is going to be fun. It's going to be fun and interesting on the table. It's going to be a good addition to my collection of armies that it's fitting in a different role. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've been looking for, I guess, a more Johnny army. Um, you know, certainly Skaven is also a very Johnny army, but um, thought it was time to look for another one. All right. Owned and previously owned. Uh, Nurgle, Slaven, Skaven, Slaven, uh, Slaves to Darkness, uh, Seraphon's White Daughters Army, so all of those off the table. Previously owned armies, uh, Cities of Sigmar, that has just gone back to being my uh, Empire Army uh, for Old World. Uh, Iron Jaws, I had briefly. Corn, I had a long time ago. Um, that's one that I'm, I would actually consider coming back to in the future, but... Um, not for this particular army project. Uh, Stormcast Eternals. I played them way back in first edition, the whole like Vanguard wing thing. Um, and it, it made me kind of hate Stormcast. Um, and I really don't like their aesthetics very much. So, uh, I just am not, uh, looking to come back to them. Caradron Overlords, I mean, there's actually a whole bunch of strikes against them from my criteria, but I did also own them. So I'm 
uh, you know, knocking out quite a few here uh, right off the rip. Like nine out of the 24 armies are just gone. All right. Things that are uh, getting crossed off the list because they're just a bit too narrow in the kind of troop selection that they have. Sons of Bayonet is, it's just all monsters. Fire Slayers is basically just all melee foot infantry. Zinch is extremely heavy on magic. Um, has historically had some really good shooting. Um, it doesn't have a lot of really good melee offense um, in any way, whether it be cavalry or infantry or whatever. Um, it's it, it struggles in that way. Um, ogres, um, it's just a big elite army, and it has pretty weak shooting uh, in general. Uh, not a lot of options for shooting. Um, and it's it's kind of missing a variety of things. It's an interesting army, um, but not for this particular project. Cruel Boy is another one that's kind of missing stuff. Um, definitely doesn't have infantry, or, or I'm sorry, not infantry. It's got all infantry, really. Uh, it doesn't have cavalry, and uh, that's kind of a problem. It doesn't have a, a good variety of, like, melee infantry or, like, troops in general. Uh, Night Haunt. Um, Night Haunt really has a shooting problem. They they do, um, they, they're... I don't know. They they're generally they're also like at top of the meta right now, and I just don't want to do that. But um, they're they're a little bit one dimensional to me. Like it's a bunch of uh, quick spoopy ghosts that are ethereal, and uh, you know it, you don't have a lot of shooting. You generally don't have a lot of magic unless you run like Nagash or something. Uh, Soul Blight Grave Lords, uh, similar problems to Night Haunt. Um, Night Haunt is really also missing monsters. Um, Soul Blight. Um, this is actually one that almost doesn't go on this list. Um, the big thing, again, that it's missing is good shooting. And so uh, it's something to maybe look at for a future army. I do like it. I like their aesthetics a lot on some of their troops. Um then uh, Flesh Eater Quartz, uh, I mean, again, like the other two death armies, there's basically no shooting. It's, uh, I don't know, like, it. it's just also an army that I'm not that interested in aesthetically, so that's um, definitely going on that list. All right, so here's what I got remaining after I knocked all of those out. I got Daughters of Cain, Ideneth, Deepkin, Sylvaneth, Ossiarch Bone Reapers, Gloomspike Gits, Slanesh, and Lumineth. So not bad. I got it down to seven. Um, so let's look at the aesthetic issues. Uh, Lumineth, I just am not excited about the way they look at all. Um, if I were to do a Lumineth army, it would be some insane conversion project, and that's just kind of not what I'm looking for right now. Uh, Ideneth Deepkin. Again, I, I just don't like elf stuff in general that much. Um, and I, I'm just, I don't feel their fishy vibes. Uh, not into it. Daughters of Cain. Um, you know, one of the big deterrents for me is all of their hair. I just don't like the, the big... Uh, like their hair situation and there's not really a way around it. I think some of the snake stuff's kind of cool. Um, but like their cauldron of blood, um, don't really like that. Um, so there's some really cool elements, but then there's stuff that I'm just not at all interested in. Gloom spike gets, um, the aesthetics that I do like in gets are really all the trolls, but, in order to actually have a well-rounded army that is going to check all of the other boxes, you can't just play trolls, so you have to deal with all the other stuff. So I'm it really just crosses Gloomspite off. I don't want to paint a crazy big horde army and um, 
to check all the boxes you really need to run a horde army. So, three finalists. Sylvaneth, Ossiarch Bone Reapers, Hidden Knights of Slanesh. Um, three armies that are, I've always thought, were pretty cool. Um, Slanesh, uh, I think I've really more, more recently warmed up to. Um, once I kind of realized how cool the mortal stuff was. Um, so let's look at some pros and cons of these three armies. Sylvaneth. They've got shooting, but it's not, like, super good. Um, and, you know, you've got your cross with bows. Um, it's full of Johnny shenanigans, which is great. Um, the aesthetics are really cool. Uh, so you have a lot of freedom and options with a bunch of trees. There's, you know, if you want to go realistic, there's all sorts of different species of trees that you can go with if you're not going for realism then i mean you can you can have purple trees if you want to it doesn't really matter it's a crazy fantasy world um osier bone reapers it, it's i think their their actual mode of play is a little too much like my existing armies so that really uh is a tough one there's a lot of bone so i think that part is going to be boring to paint not interesting um and also to get it to like the standard that i want i think it would be very tedious as well uh and, and its monster situation really isn't great um or virtually at all so um that's maybe one that's a little bit less important in this but it certainly is um it, it, an issue uh heap knights of slanesh uh a lot of their models are terrible um but they are mostly like the old demon models that i hate so what does that mean well i mean if slanesh gets a refresh those are probably going to be the models that get replaced um and also i don't think they're necessary to um actually be playing there most of your variety is really coming on the mortal side anyway and then the the, the big important stuff like the keeper of secrets and senessa and dexessa those are gorgeous models so i'm not too worried about them there um so yeah and their heroes are generally really cool um it's got lots of chaos trim and after doing a whole bunch of slaves to darkness i'm kind of tired of that but um i think it's got a lot of other interesting things uh it has a very different play style from what i currently have um it one thing that i really don't have is a, the kind of speedy tricksy kind of army that slanesh is um, historically their rules have been a disaster right like they've either been way too good or terrible they can't get the depravity mechanism right um the mechanics of that are, are always changing and weird um i think the current iteration is actually not terrible and there is some hate for it but um it's uh, a lot better than I think some people are giving it credit for, um, especially with the most recent change to it. So, weighing all of this out, where am I at? Gonna go with Slanesh. Something that I really did not expect, but it has really great unit variety, even with having uh, all of those demon units that I don't like, that I am probably not going to play. Um, Right, like so, I can just avoid the bad models, and some of them, like the chariots, like yeah, they're being ridden by demons, but I could certainly find ways to convert mortals to ride those things so that they actually look cool and don't have derpy demons on them. Um, right, like the the mortal models are fantastic the big centerpiece models are fantastic like all of the new stuff that they've created is really good it's like all of the old demon crap i really don't like um it has some of my 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 favorite 
well, I'm not going to say some of, one of my favorite unit types. Um, the the wacky lone hero that goes in and does wacky melee things um, and is, you know, it, preferably ones that are quick, but, um, you know, just like Sigvald going in and being a menace. And the Lord of Hubris just is, uh, that whole concept is just hilarious. And I think he'll be really fun to run. And, you know, the Chaos Trim, I think, is just something that I can deal with. I need to come up with a, a paint scheme on this, but I think taking inspiration from slaneshiness in general, like that excess, it's going to give me an opportunity to do something that I haven't really done or like on a, an army before, and that is going really crazy with really bright colors. Um, so going excessive in the realm of... Uh, you know, the color palette and saturation and really making this army like crazy and stand out. I don't know what exactly the colors are going to be yet. Um, I have actually been uh, enjoying the uh, the individual colors of, uh, you know, the the Vince Venturella favorites of like, you know, the, the pink and teal uh, kind of look. So and those go together really nicely and are also great for Slanesh. Um, other kind of hobby ideas, uh, like doing the metallics in ways that are, I, I don't know how to put it exactly, but like not just a, a true metallic metal, um, using something else to create a metallic look. Um, I, I guess maybe doing non-metallic metal on the army and learning that. But um, using, like, unconventional colors is really more the thing. Like, maybe having, like, uh, bright teal, uh, like, blades on their weapons or something. I, I don't I gotta, I gotta tool around with it. So, anyway, that's gonna be it. Landing on Slanesh. Gonna do some content on Slanesh, because uh, I think there's uh, some interesting math in the army and uh, some other interesting choices. So, uh... That's going to be it here. Uh, I actually placed my order for my my first Slanashi models, and we're going to get going. Um, so that's going to be it. I'll talk to you all later.